Okay, greetings again. We'll look at God's word from uh, Matthew chapter 6, from verse 25 to 34. Our topic this morning is anxiety and trusting God in difficult times. Let's open our Bibles uh, in the Roman in the book of Matthew, chapter six, starting from verse twenty-five to verse thirty-four. I'll read. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is life, is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the beds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can Add a single hour to his span of life. And why, and why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the, de- for the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. As part of my introduction, I will start by giving a basic uh, dictionary definition of the word anxiety or being anxious, because sometimes we use words differently. Anxiety or anxiousness uh, means that uneasiness of mind about an uncertain outcome. It can be a feeling of worry, a feeling of nervousness, a feeling of concern. I'm certain that most of us had those feelings at some point in our lives. To some, it could be the feelings that they encounter daily uh, in their lives. There is so much going on in our lives. There's so much going on in our country. Uh, We face anxiety uh, generally. It could be as a result of the ongoing load shedding the high rate of um, it, the high interest rates, the aftermath of COVID-19, and some part of the world like KZN, there has been uh, there was looting that caused a lot of job losses. The list goes on and on, and even personally, people are going through issues. It can be anxiety due to workplace issues. It can be mental illness. It can come as a result of uh, failed uh, relationships, failed or difficult relationships, debt, unanswered questions about life, unanswered questions about death. It, It seems like there are so many reasons. There are plenty of reasons that can cause us to be anxious or to have anxiety. But thankfully, we can turn into God's word. And our Lord has said something 
about this particular uh, topic. Hence, our first point this morning is, as Christians, as Christian men in this context, we are given an instruction, we are given a command not to be anxious. It's a command, it's an instruction, We are encouraged not to be anxious. This is the command from the Lord Jesus. When you look at that passage that I read just now in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 to verse 34, the word anxiety is repeated at least in four verses, emphasizing this command, emphasizing uh, this instruction. Look at verse 25a. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Verse 27, a question is being asked. And it's emphasizing the very same point. Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? It's also repeated in verse 31. Therefore, do not be anxious. Verse 34, therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious of itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. When I look at my own life, I doubt there is any other commandment that I have broken more than this one. Yeah. In actual fact, in all uh, the negative prohibitions that Jesus gave, more than any other, it's this one. Meaning that Jesus knows that all of us in our fallenness, we go through the edge, uh, we go through life to, in the edge of anxiety. I know maybe most of us here are not worried about where lunch will come from. But people in Jesus' days, they worried about what they will eat and what they will uh, drink. And they worried about what they will put on. Which is true to date to the two-thirds of uh, the world population. We might be not worried about those basic things mentioned in the text. However, we still worry about all sorts of things. Men especially, we worry with respect to our, to our ability to care and to provide for our families. We worry about our children's education, insurances, high interest rate, etc. But Jesus has given, a, has given us a command not to be anxious. And each time when the Lord gave this instruction, he gave a reason why. The Lord Jesus in scripture has at least 12 times been recorded, recorded to have said, don't worry, don't be anxious, and each time, in each occasion, he explained why. But for the purposes of today's talk, we would look at two reasons that he gave in this passage. Hence, we move to our second point. Our second point is, it does not help to be anxious. It solves nothing. Nothing. Verse 27. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? It's pointless to be anxious. It achieves nothing. We can worry all we want, but it doesn't add anything in our lives. All it does, it takes today's joy. 
worrying about tomorrow robs today of its joy. Hence, verse 34 says, sufficient for the day is its own trouble. The second reason that is given in the text is that anxiety betrays or shows a lack of trust in the Lord. Let's look at verse 30. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? O oh, you of little faith. The narrative there is that you worry about what you will eat or drink or what you will put on. Then it says, look, your God provides for the beds of the air. He provides for the beds of the air and your father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? In actual fact, that point is reiterated uh, that it comes as a result of the lack of trusting God in this passage by saying in verse, part of verse 31. No, 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 verse 32. It read like this. For the gentle seeks after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So it says, it's, it's, it's actually uh, worldly, it's Gentile-like to be, to be anxious. Little faith or disbelief. It comes as a result of little faith or disbelief in, in, in God's uh, promises. That's, that's the issue here. And it's an issue of faith, an issue of faith, that is fed by the lack of trusting God in his promises. So as our faith grows, anxiety shrinks. Having said that, I don't want to sound judgmental or insensitive, especially to some of us who experience strong feelings of anxiousness in our lives. The issue here is not that we deal with anxious, anxiousness. The issue is how do we deal with it? How do we deal with it every day? How do we battle with this Satan's attack? And our Lord has addressed this issue at great length. The Bible says we are to find rest in God's promises. We shouldn't cave, but we should fight it. And we have been given a solution. An antidote has been given to us. First Peter 5, 7 says, Casting your anxieties on him because he cares for you. You can't cast them if you don't have them. The fact that you feel the blows of anxiety, this is what you need to do. We cast them to the Lord. We trust the Lord more. He cares. He cares even for the birds, the grass. Surely we are more of value to our Father than they. The psalmist said, in Psalms 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. What's the reason that he gave for not fearing? Was it, was, was it, not, was it because he was not afraid of death? No. Was he happy in the shadows? No. But he says, I will fear no evil for you, Lord, are with me. Jesus said, fear not because I am. What 
whatever that you are going through, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. If we knew that with full assurance, we wouldn't be afraid of anything. Hence, anxiety betrays our trust in God. Brothers, the Bible does not leave us with nothing to replace anxiety. We've been given something to replace uh, anxiety with. If we find ourselves having these constant feelings of anxiety, we've been given something. Verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Seek first. That's protos in the Greek. In the first order of importance is the kingdom of God. Everything else is secondary. What comes first in the value system of God is his kingdom. And as converted men, that should be our activity. Yes. We worry. We worry about all these things, but the Bible says they, if we put the kingdom of God first, they shall be add, all these other things shall be added to us. Maybe I should explain that. Jesus is not commanding us to be inactive here. He's not saying, don't worry about being productive. Don't worry about providing for your family. Don't worry about providing for your household. Don't be concerned about these things. Just lay back, take it easy. The Lord will take, will take care of you. No, that's not what is happening. This is not some giant welfare program. <laughs> it's not. We are supposed to work and be productive. But the productivity which we are called is not to be carried out amidst paralyzing fear and anxiety. That, that's the point here. We do what we do, but not amidst paralyzing fear and anxiety. Because we understand that our God values us more, more than his creation. He feeds the bed. He purifies the flowers. How much more will he take care of us? Will he take care of us? So we've been given what to do to replace anxiety. Further, furthermore, in Philippians 4, 6, we're also given the tools there, what to do when we have these feelings. Philippians 4, 6, the word of God says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. That's what we do when we face these challenges. Lastly, we read in Romans 8, verse 38 and 39, and we can see the that our confidence, our trust in the Lord is to be for this life and the life to come. In life and in death, we belong to the Lord. There is nothing that we there is nothing that can cause us to lose in the in the in the in the bigger scheme of things, we are safe. All we need to do is to trust in the Lord. Is to, if we experience such feelings, we cast them to the Lord, and we make we make our our request known to God. We have a privilege as Christians to take everything to God. In prayer, he cares. He cares for the beds. He feeds them. He purifies the flowers. 
Surely he cares more for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sia, for that uh, very uplifting sermon. I'm sure uh, everyone will agree it's uh, really made a, a big uh, impact on our lives today. It's a small thank gift you. from our ministry to you, and thanking you for your time with us today. Thank you very much. Much All appreciated. Right. All right. As I mentioned before, um, I had some books to give away. Hope in an Anxious World. It's a short one, so you should be able to read that quite easily. Um, I've got a couple of questions, and if, if you know the answers, just uh, put up your hand and you can come. Uh, I'll, I'll bring the book to you. All right, so the first question, and I hope you were listening right from the beginning. There are two more breakfasts coming up. Um, who remembers the date of one of those breakfasts? Skulk. No, no. Uh, Zolani? Uh, 16 September, 22nd. All right, well. Oh. Very good. That doesn't mean two books. All right. All right, and then who can remember the name of the town where Sia is from? Who said that? Yes. Yeah, no, I'm just. Who? In Changa. All right. Did you say? All right. Brent? Changa. That's what I thought I heard. Changa. That's what he said. Well put. All right. And finally, um, which book of the Bible did uh, did uh, Sia take his passage from? Jonathan, Matthew. Matthew correct. All right. Yeah. I'll give you a book uh, after the after the meeting. I'd like to take this time to just thank everybody for attending this morning. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I, we do we do understand it's it's time out of your busy Saturdays, time with your families and your children, and we do appreciate that you've taken this time just to to be with us today in fellowship. Thank you, Mitch, for making sure everything ran smoothly, as it should. Thank you to uh, my Friday men's group for coming in early this morning, super early, to, to prepare the room and prepare the food for us all. It was, yes. There's a, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes work that makes an event like this. I'm sure you understand, uh, be successful. Thank you to um, Andre and the elders for obviously always making the church available, the church hall available for an event like this. I'd like to just now close in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we close this morning's meeting, we gather before your throne of grace with hearts full of gratitude and awe. We thank you, O Lord, for the precious time we've shared together, seeking wisdom, comfort, truth in your presence. We are humbled by your unwavering love and in the ways which you provide for all of our needs. Father, we recognize that anxiety can often consume us and rob us of peace and joy that you desire for us. We acknowledge that in a world filled with uncertainties, our hearts can become heavy and burdened. Yet in the midst of our worries, we find comfort in your promises. Gracious God, we ask for your divine intervention in our lives. Teach us to trust you wholeheartedly, knowing that you alone are our loving and faithful provider. Remind us that just as you care for the birds in the air and the lilies of the field, you are also care for us, your beloved children. Grant us the faith to surrender our anxieties to you, believing that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We lift up all here today who are struggling with anxiety. Be their refuge and their strength, their ever-present help in times of trouble. Pour out your peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding the hearts and minds in Christ. Grant them discernment to recognize the lilies, <coughs> the lies of the enemies, and encourage to stand firm in your truth. Lord, we lift Sierra and his congregation to you this morning. Please continue the good work that you have started in their lives and continue to grow them spiritually to your glory. 
We pray that you'll continue to provide for Sia and his community funds to continue with their building maintenance and also provisions for their, for their community in, in, in total. As we leave this gathering, may your Holy Spirit continue to guide us, reminding us of the truth that we've heard and encouraging us to walk in faith, casting all of our cares upon you. Empower us to be men who lean on you, finding strength and vulnerability and finding rest in your embrace. We give you all the glory and honor, Lord, for you alone are worthy. Thank you for the food that we've shared, both physical and spiritual. May the bonds of brotherhood formed here today continue to strengthen and encourage us as we journey together in faith. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.